I don't know, I feel like I'm giving like rich something like with this sweater. The sweater is new, I really like it. <laughs> hey, I'm back and luckily in much better spirits. I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. And it's so cold in the studio here so I actually need something like kind of warm, honestly. I don't know about you, but Eurovision 2016 is shaping up to be pretty competitive in my opinion. I definitely have way more favorites on my list than I thought I would have at this point, but this video isn't about my favorites, no, no, no. This video is about the countries that I feel like are actually most likely to win. Now, of course, I'm gonna be looking at a lot of different criteria, so let me tell you how I came to this decision. I'm looking at song quality, so of course, this is the Eurovision Song Contest, so the song has to be good. It has to be, in my opinion, slightly unique, something that sets it apart, definitely not too generic, and being that I work at a radio station, um, I'm also checking and seeing in my mind if I feel like it's actually radio friendly now. I am based here in the States, and so our musical stylings, what we play on the radio, a little bit different, but I thought I might give my perspective from a US radio brain. <laughs> we all know that we need to see a show on the Eurovision 2016 stage in Stockholm, Sweden. So of course I'm gonna be thinking about the onstage performance, what I actually think is going to go down on that stage. Now some countries totally prepared. They, they are definitely gonna bring us something good on stage. Some of these countries, I think they have a good chance of winning, but could definitely hurt their chances depending upon what they decide to bring us in the semis and the final. I also thought it'd be fun to look at some of these betting odds. So yeah, I'm looking at the betting odds. I'm seeing what's going on there. I'm seeing what the numbers are telling me. Also something, and I don't know if people really think about this, but I do. I think about the time of year because at the end of the day, we have to think about a place that we're actually gonna be traveling to. Plus we have to think about, you know, countries that maybe deserve to host. You know, they might not have won yet, and they could be really, really great locales. So I'm also gonna be taking that into consideration. I mean, and for real, like, I mean, where do people actually wanna go? Where do people actually wanna travel to, to go and support the Eurovision Song Contest? I feel like I'm giving, like, cheers, darling, cheers, darling, um, <laughs> with this sweater on. These are the countries that I legitimately, legitimately think could actually win. Eurovision 2016 in Stockholm, Sweden. And yes, we'll then go on to be our host of Eurovision 2017 in no particular order. Here are the countries as follows. Australia, Croatia, Iceland, Malta, Russia, and Ukraine. So let me start off with Australia. A names and A begins the alphabet. So I'm gonna start there. You know, honestly, I really feel like this song is great. I think we're gonna get a great onstage performance. You know, the only thing that I really think could hold this back is the fact that it's Australia. And I think there might be some questions about, well, if Australia wins, who's gonna host? And I think last year, if I'm not mistaken, Germany was the country that sort of stepped up and said, hey, if Australia wins, you know, we will go on and host it. Um, so that's really the only question, but I love this song. And of the slower kind of pop ballads that we have it I mean it still has of course like this nice mid-tempo um, downbeat to it of those songs I think this song really stands out this was really close to me song wise with Germany uh, ghosts from uh, being sung by Jamie but Dami Eam just really takes this over the edge and I know Australia is gonna give us something decent to look at on stage. So yeah, Australia can totally get it. I think the only thing that'll hold it back is the fact that it's Australia and people might be kind of like, eh, you guys aren't really in Europe. Croatia, this song really kind of surprised me. I really like the song. The The only question I have with this song really is what they're gonna give us on stage. and. To be honest, I'm not too sure we're gonna get something that's gonna really set this song apart and something that's really gonna elevate it, unfortunately, because I do think it is a good song. I'd love to go to Croatia <laughs> the May after next. 2017, Croatia in May, yeah, I'd wanna go there. But yeah, I just wonder if what's gonna happen on stage is really gonna match the great song that we got. Iceland, yes, Iceland. Look, Iceland could totally win. Iceland could totally win. I think 
they have set up just, Iceland has been on this kick, pushing tourism, trying to bring people in. I mean, they've got multiple airlines there that give you super cheap round trip flights. They've really been boosting up just their whole tourism pitch and they're trying to get people in that country. And honestly, Eurovision will be a great way to feature how awesome Iceland really is. And let's be real, Iceland has never won the Eurovision Song Contest before. And they're coming really strong. Honestly, the only thing that could hold this back, and I'm putting this on you, Greta, I've been listening to Hear Them Calling on a loop in my car. So I haven't been watching the stage show. I've just been listening to what's been happening. And the vocals that Greta is giving, she's not hitting those notes really strong. She, She's not. And um, what's really going to hold this back is you, Greta. I mean, you have to carry this song. You cannot rely on all that fancy stuff that's happening behind you. I mean, you have the recipe. You could totally win this. I believe in you. And I would love to go to Iceland next May. I mean, I have so many friends that have actually been to Iceland and they rave about it. They say it's super awesome. Definitely a place to put on your list to visit. So Greta, girl, it's on you. Next up is Malta. Malta, we now have a new song. The song is good. I like it. Malta has also never ever won Eurovision before. Uh, the only thing that's gonna hold this performance back, it's the same thing I said about Iceland is Ira's vocals. You gotta sell that song, girl. It's all on you. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. It is all on you, girl, to sell that song. And if you sell it, we'll buy it. We'll be into it. We'll be voting for you because I do think, I do think Eurovision 2017 Malta, that'd be awesome. I'd be down for that. Next up, I mean, I think every single year, Russia is a front runner. I mean, whether you like it or not, Russia is always gonna be a front runner because they're giving us quality. They are, there's nothing wrong with them giving us quality. Now, what'll hold back Russia is politics. You know, people just not feeling enthusiastic about traveling to Russia, which to be honest, if Eurovision happened in Russia 2017, I probably wouldn't go, uh, but that would be for my safety. <laughs> I'm not trying to get arrested. It's just unfortunate that politics have to come into play. It just really is unfortunate because there are some amazing performers and Sergei's really gonna deliver on the stage. I mean, we know that. Sergei's gonna give us something amazing. So it's just unfortunate that we even have to talk about politics and how that'll affect the competition, but Hey, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to look at Eurovision fans who, you know, let's be real. A lot of us are not straight people and could be afraid to travel to Russia, rightfully so. I still think Russia could take top honors and I still think they could win. Again, I think it would be a very low attended Eurovision for Eurovision 2017 if Russia were to win. But I do think it'd be a great show, and I think they put on an they put on an amazing show. And last up is Ukraine. I mean, honestly, Ukraine is here on this who could win because of the song. It, it really is because of the song. The song is just good. It's just good. And you know what? I'm gonna touch on this because some people are saying that the song can't win um, because it might break some rule because it's too political. I don't know if you guys know what's going on in the world right now. But here in America, we're kind of having like a little bit of a revolution. I think, you know, with uh, the Syrian refugees and whatnot, I think there is a lot of different revolutions happening um, for persecuted people. And I think to just think that this song is simply about Russia is a little vain of Russia. <laughs> to just think that the song is just about you. To me, this is an anthem for oppression, for people who have been oppressed. This is a song for women. This is a song for people of color. This is a song for people who have been religiously persecuted, um, who have been discriminated unfairly. This is a battle cry, honestly, for the oppressed. That is what this song is about, period, point blank. End of story. Yeah, I mean, 
is Jamala maybe referencing Russia for her, her experience and the experience that Ukrainians have felt with Russia? Yeah, maybe. But I don't think that that means that that is completely what the song is about, given where we are just in the world um, and the oppression and the discrimination and people really oppressed people rising up and fighting against the system and speaking their mind. That is what this song is about. And that is who this song is for. It is for anyone who has ever been oppressed. And it's just amazing. This song, it's just good. Politics aside, you know, this is, and honestly, I've given crap to message songs before in the past. This is how you do a message song right, people. So take notes. All of you countries that want to do message songs, this is how you do it.